Hello, everybody. I'm Chris Sheeran coming to you from my house, and Michael Grady is coming to us from his place as well. Uh, we're doing what our colleagues across the board at Yes are bringing you, trying to bring a little normalcy into this these uncharted waters we're in, and we're just letting you all know, yes, we're here. Uh, Michael and I are going to uh, go through an NBA bracket. Now, we want the NBA to come back ASAP, but we want to do it where it's in a situation where everyone is safe. And they're talking about going through August and playing and hopefully getting back in July for their season. We don't know what's going to happen, but I figured a couple days ago, Michael, since we're not going to have a March Madness, maybe we could have an NBA Madness if it doesn't come back until August. And I tweeted these out. I, I, I was bored as everybody else is. So I said, you know what, you know, it'd be really fun, at least for me. And this is my own little personal NBA utopia. Don't hate, as uh, Jamie Kennedy said in Malibu's Most Wanted in that movie back in 2003. Don't hate. If you want to make something up where you're doing your own NBA utopia, go right ahead. This is mine, and I'm having Michael here help me with this. But I figured just like the All-Star game, Michael, we could have two regions of 15 teams that's the entire league. That's 30 teams. Now, the only thing I got pushed back when I put this on Twitter, I want to get your thoughts on this first. They didn't want to include all the teams. They said, a couple people said, give me 24 teams and then I'll be into it. But here's my thing. Trey Young would not be in that mix in those 24 teams. I want to see these young stars. I want to see every single team because we might see an all-star situation, Michael, where all these teams like lock in, hey, this is one game, we have to do this, and I want every city involved. What do you think? I, I would too, I, um, and, and you're being generous to Knicks fans, although I don't even think Knicks fans want to see that team in a tournament. Um, but no, I want to see, I want to see Trey Young. I want to see you know, some of these teams that are kind of figuring things out, and there's different right. ways, again, like you said, that you can do this. You could have, Atlanta and the Knicks play for an opportunity to play a top of the world. Right. There's different. There's certainly different ways to do it, but also, after all this time, I think fans will at least want the opportunity to see their team right. play at least one more time. So if you limit it to just 24, some team season is all you know is completely right. over, and that's it. And once everything is once once we're back to that sense of normalcy, like you talked about. They still won't get an opportunity to see their team. I think every team deserves a chance to at least play one more game. That, that's my thing. You know, everybody's starved. Everybody in every city is starved for something. I mean, usually, Michael, the sports world, and I know our colleagues uh, with the yes, we're here things that they're doing, they went through this as well. But when there's been a personal tragedy in your life or a national tragedy such as September 11th, when sports comes back, it's that escape that everyone so desperately needs. And we don't have that now. And it's just weird because every time something tragic strikes, it's that three hours of a baseball game or three hours of a football game or two and a half hours of an NBA game that just gets your mind off of everything. And you're able to just be normal for those three hours before you go back to feeling that tragedy. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, I, I, um, there are, bigger things at stake right now that we're dealing with. So I think we can talk about both at the same time. You know, the health issue and what's going on in the country, and that, and that makes sports seem small in the grand scheme of things. But to your point, sports is also huge as an escape, um, as, a, uh, as, as a way to get away from issues and, and to level the playing field where it didn't matter where your standing is in life, whatever it may be, where you are, you can cheer for the Yankees, you can cheer for the Nets, whatever your team may be, and that escape is, is much, much needed. Uh, so let's get into these, these brackets, Michael. So what I did was I, I went all-star game. Uh, I know half the, the one team wore Gianna's number and the other team wore Kobe's number. So my regions, the two regions are the Gianna region, which, mm -hmm. has, which has the Bucks as the number one seed, and they get a first round bye. And then the Kobe region, which has the Lakers as the top seed, and the Lakers get that first round by. Now let's start, because I think this one's a little bit more intriguing. The Kobe region, to me, that the, how I set it up is pretty intriguing, because the 8-9 matchup, 
you know, the 8-9 will take on the one that has the bye. The 8-9 matchup in the Kobe region is the Nets and Pelicans. And either team that wins there, that next game against the Lakers, I'm locked in on that game. It's either yeah. Zion against LeBron or it's the Nets <laughs> who took the last three of four against the Lakers. I like that. I like that. And I had an argument at breakfast because uh, my stepson is a, is a, he loves the Nets, but he's, you know, his family are all from New Orleans. Right. So we had a little argument at uh, breakfast over that. I would go, I would go Nets in that, in that scenario for an opportunity right. to play the Lakers. But uh, that would be a fun matchup right there for sure. All right. So you have the bracket. So for the sake of time here in that Kobe region, do you have any upset specials as I get a little Dick Vitale in here? <laughs> uh, you know what? The one I look at, like one that's a potential for an upset is um, honestly the Timberwolves at full strength, you know, with D'Lo, Cat, like that squad could give the Nuggets some issues. I still have the Nuggets winning. So the one that I have will not necessarily be in the first round. I really have chalk in the first round. But Houston. That's a team that a lot of folks love to hate. And when you're playing small ball, all it takes is one off shooting game for you to be knocked out. So Houston could get, could get knocked out in that first round against the Bulls. However, if you're hitting on all cylinders, Russ is going, James is going, and you're hot, Forget you could it. go on a run in the tournament. So that's the direction that I went. I went the direction of Houston winning that first game over the Bulls and then beating the four seed Miami in round two. I have the same thing. I, in that round, uh, in the final eight in the Kobe region, I have Lakers, Nets, Rockets, Heat. But here's where it gets a little weird. <laughs> uh -oh. I have, now look, you and I, because we cover this Nets team, we've seen Bradley Beal in fourth quarters go absolutely off, okay? Yes. So I have Bradley Beal and the Wiz upsetting the Sixers Ooh. in the first round game. I have the 11 going and beating the six there. Ooh. Then I have them meeting the Nuggets. And then I have the Grizzlies and the Raptors. So I have the Grizzlies beating the Spurs. Yep. And I have the Raptors getting by the Warriors. And how funny is that? Last year's finals is a first <laughs> round 215 matchup. I like that. The Raptors and the Warriors. And here's where it gets even better. I have John Morant and the Grizzlies taking out Toronto. Oh, <laughs> I almost wish that the Grizzlies had a different matchup because I want to see Ja go further. And we saw them not long ago just completely obliterate, you know, Brooklyn. And part of that, points, Brooklyn, yeah. wasn't playing, Brooklyn wasn't playing great basketball at that time, but the Grizzlies just looked locked in. Like, they are really trying to hold off the Pelicans and other teams for that eighth spot. So, they're playing, they're, they were playing focused, really tough basketball. So, I could see a squad like that with a hungry player like Morant going on a run. Um, I have Toronto beating them, though, in, in round two. But that'd be okay. a heck of a matchup. All right. See, I, no one should ever listen to me when I do my brackets. I think I no. won the first year we had the, the challenge at yes, and then every subsequent year, which is – 17 years, by the way, no one should have copied <laughs> my brackets ever. So, but I figured, how could you not have a little fun, Michael, if you don't have a couple of upset specials? You'd have to. And, and it doesn't end there for the Grizzlies. So my bracket might be completely messed up. <laughs> but I have them beating the Raptors. Then I have them beating the Nuggets in the next Ooh. round. So the final four in the Kobe region for me, Lakers, Rockets, which who wouldn't want to see that matchup in the final right. four in that region? Right. I have the Nuggets and the Grizzlies, and I have the Grizzlies advancing past the Nuggets, and then I have the, Lakers. I have the Lakers coming in. So the final two, so in that final four, the Kobe region, my final two for the final four overall are the Lakers and the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies are my VCU, my old school Gonzaga, you know, my George Mason. They're my guys. I, I am locked in on Memphis right now. I like it. I like it. Well, I got Lakers, Houston, Denver, and then Toronto. Okay. Uh, Toronto, I have so much respect for, for the way that they've been playing. A lot of folks thought Kawhi leaves, they're going to fall by the wayside, but they've been playing with a championship pedigree that I didn't think that they had in them. So I have them beating Denver there. So my final two in that Kobe region, Lakers and Raptors.
All right, let's go over to the Gianna region now. And, and this one for me, I don't know about you, I'm gonna let you break it down first. But this one for me, I kind of have chalk. It, it's one here, one there, but nothing too big. So do you have any upsets on this side of the bracket? Um, I'm gonna have to duck from all my, uh, my Indiana people, but my <laughs> upset in the Gianna region, um, seeing the Suns earlier this season at full strength with Rubio at the point and Devin being able to play Back off ball, yeah. do his thing. Like I, the Suns were playing some really good basketball. Injuries and different things kind of threw them off as the season went along. But the Pacers, again, if we're saying basketball comes back in August, before this whole thing ended, the whole thing started where they, they stopped playing, the Pacers were trying to figure things out. You know, Victor Oladipo is back. How is he going to work with Malcolm Brogdon? How are these all guys going to work together? And they were kind of sputtering a little bit. So you have the Suns at full strength and the Pacers still trying to figure out their chemistry. That makes Indiana right for an upset. That's my one upset in okay. the first round of the Gianna region. Other than that, it's all chalk. Yeah, I, I have pretty much chalk other than the Blazers as a nine beating the Magic because – You know what? I have that one too. I, yeah, I take that back. I have that one too. Dame. <laughs> Dame in a, in, a, in a big game or a, in a one-off. I'm taking big yes. game. I'm sorry. And, Nur and Nurkic would be back, too. And Nurkic, Nurkic too. Because Nurkic and Whiteside. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And then the rest, I believe, here I have is chalk. Let me just make sure. Yes, it is. It's chalk. All right. Moving forward. So I have Bucks, Blazers, mm -hmm. Thunder, Jazz, Pacers, Celtics, Mavs, Clippers. Now, the Clips and Celtics advance. So I had the Pacers, you had the uh, Suns, but I have uh, the Celtics and Pacers and the Celtics moving forward. Then Bucks, Blazers, I have Giannis moving. Thunder, Jazz, I'm taking OKC. I, 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 you know, it, they're, they're a scary team, and, and they've been playing well too. Everybody, like CP3 went to OKC, and everybody was like, ah, that's like a throwaway. He's going to want to get out of there. He has those guys playing well, Michael. Uh, that's the story uh, outside of Lakers, Bucks. That to me, that's the story of the NBA that's not being talked about enough. What OKC is doing, they, <laughs> folks. I, I, I talked about a dip for Toronto, playing without Kawhi Leonard, Leonard this season. The drop, the the Thunder loss, Paul and Russ, yeah. and their record, if I'm not mistaken, at the time play stopped was better. Than the, than the Rockets. So, <laughs> and how? How? So, look, Chris, Chris put this on his mantle in terms of his list of accomplishments in his career, what he's been able to do with Oklahoma City. They are a Cinderella story in this bracket that would be really fun, fun to watch. And so, yes, they would be better than the, beat the Knicks for sure. I have them beating the Utah uh, Jazz, and I think they would give Milwaukee all they can handle in that uh, final four of the Gianna region. I, I have the same thing. Um, and I think that Bucks OKC game would be very dicey for Giannis and company. I think uh, I think the Thunder would play them extremely tough, yeah. but Cinderella's slipper in my blank in my bracket gets broken. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, the Bucks advance and the Clippers advance. So, if, see, this is why I set it up this way. I took the Clippers. I made them the two seed in the Bucks region. And I took the Raptors just to mix it up. So if it got to the case where it was 1-2, it's Lakers-Raptors and it's Bucks clippers So you might end up having Lakers-Clippers in that final, Michael. And that's what I have. The, the Grizzlies, although I liked them up into that's... the final four, <laughs> there's no LeBron like a playoff LeBron because a playoff LeBron gets things done. <laughs> I'll put you. I um I had uh Boston Clippers, Clippers getting past them, and then the Clippers getting past Milwaukee. So I have Lakers and Clippers in my final. Oh, so we have the same final. The same final. Same uh, final. See, we gotta get Adam Silver to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> and we need these brackets to stay intact. And we need you and I to like be there at the arena, like with our brackets in hand and, and right. ready to go. Right, <laughs> exactly. But think exactly. about it. Think about it. You know, with all this stuff going on, you could have it in one arena. Um, it, it could just be done in, in one area. You have all the players uh, in the same area. You have the same facility for everything. And you just get it done, and it gets everybody back into the sport. Now, do you count the champion as the 
NBA champion? Maybe not. But it's a good vehicle in my eyes. Again, my NBA utopia. Don't hate. Uh, but in my eyes, it's just it's something that gives the fans a spark again and maybe gets people back into that swing with sports coming back. You know, they yeah. got taste. Yes, yes, no doubt, no doubt. You can add a charity component to it. You can add different Absolutely. elements to it for sure. There are a lot of NBA players who miss that that March Madness feel um, and playing those style of games. Like seven game series can be really taxing. Um, and so playing a, a one and done style uh, tournament like this would take some of these guys back to their March Madness roots. And for a guy like LeBron, never got to experience right. it. So, so the pressure for each game, I think, would be a lot of fun, not only for fans, but I think it'd be something these players would embrace. Hey, hey look, I, I don't know how you felt about the All-Star game this year. I had mixed emotions with the rules going in because I kind of like things the way they always used to be. But I got to tell you, that fourth quarter – was amazing the defense yeah. that was being played in an all-star game it took me back to the mid to late nine or the early 90s to the mid 90s with the bad boys of detroit the knicks if you went in the paint you were black and blue <laughs> <laughs> that's what that defense in that fourth quarter reminded me of it reminded me of old school nba it was tremendous and it, 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 it something mattered something was right. on the line you had, the, you had the, the kids behind the baskets who they were playing for, a reminder of what the guys were playing for. Um, and there was, there was something on the line, and it made them want to play defense. And I, I think that this format for a one-and-done style tournament would have that same type of element. How many times have we seen a blowout in game one of a, a seven-game playoff series, and guys go, you know, eh, we'll get them next game. The next <laughs> right. game was a blowout the other way. There's no incentive right. until you get to right. that elimination game where guys start putting everything on the line to avoid elimination. And this, every game is an elimination. So I think you would see the same intensity of play that we saw in the All-Star game fourth quarter. Michael, as you said at the beginning of this, it's just so nice to see your face. It's so nice to hear your voice. It's so nice to talk sports, even though yeah. this is like imaginary. It's just so nice to be sitting here and conversing about something other than common core math. <laughs> Trust me. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> listen, uh, here, here. listen, stay safe. Thank you for the time. And as I always tell you, I wish it was the case now. We'll see it throughout the game and on the post-game show as well. My man, my man, my man. By the way, who'd you have winning between the Lakers and uh, Clippers? Oh, oh. I got Lakers. I got Clippers. <laughs> I got Kawhi. I got Kawhi yeah. going back to back and a belly to belly. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like Sorry, it. I miss John Sterling too. I got to get him in there. Yeah, well. I, like I like it. I like it. Yeah, I got LeBron, brother. All right, Michael, stay <laughs> safe and be well, my friend. Appreciate you, brother.